Friends in Faith, I'm Pastor Nathan Gregg, and I'm delighted to welcome you to worship today. We're here in the corner of the sanctuary at Zion Lutheran Church in Lexington, and glad you are joining from your corner of the world where you are. It's the month of July, and still this season of isolation and interruption drags on. As the world around us continues to try and figure out how to safely and wisely react to the spread of COVID-19, many are growing frustrated and weary. I hope that this time of worship today can be for you a rest for the weary and a place to be renewed by the good news of God's kingdom. Take heart, friends, for God reigns and God cares for you. Let us begin with this call to worship. I will exalt you, O God, and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end to God's greatness. O Lord, you are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. O Lord, you are good to all, and you look with mercy on all you have made. All your works praise you, O Lord. And we, your faithful people, bless you. We shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. May all people know of your wondrous acts and the glorious splendor of your majesty. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your gracious reign endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your works and loving in all your words. You, Lord, uphold all those who fall down and lift up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing.
Today's scripture reading is from the 11th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens. So let me ask you, what are you carrying right now? What are you carrying? The scariest thing I have ever done in my life involved carrying something heavy. Now, I've been on top of high mountains, traveled through some wild places in the world, did some pretty irresponsible stuff as a kid, but I'm pretty sure the closest brush with death that I ever had was years ago when I was moving out of a second floor apartment. My wife Joanna and I were newly married and we were packing up to go to Texas for my internship year while in seminary. It was August in Columbia, so you can imagine how hot it was. Joanna's parents were in town helping us pack up and load the U-Haul truck. Now, we didn't have that much stuff, really, some dishes, some clothes, a, a hand-me-down table, and some chairs. There was only one piece of furniture that we had bought ourselves at that point as a couple, a desk, a big desk. It was one of those manufactured wood things with cabinets and shelves. It was a really nice-looking desk but it weighed a ton. Actually, it probably weighed a couple hundred pounds, maybe somewhere in between. I'm really not very good at estimating that kind of thing. All I know is that my father-in-law and I carried the desk out of the apartment and down the stairs, and I volunteered to be the one to go backwards. I guess I didn't really think till the whole thing was in motion that if something went wrong on the way down, that whole desk was coming down on me. I have never concentrated on something that hard in my whole life. Sweat dripping down my face from the summer heat. Shoes being sure of every step. Well, we made it. But it was heavy. What are you carrying these days? Hopefully not something that heavy, not that weighty, though I bet you are feeling the weight of lots of things. Many concerns, frustrations, and sorrows these days. I feel like these words from Jesus, the appointed gospel reading for this Sunday come to us right at a time we need to hear them. In a way, we are always weary and carrying heavy burdens, but I think that's infinitely more true right now. And so listen again to what Jesus says and let this living word speak to you. Come to me. All you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, 
and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There are three different groups of people this passage makes me think about today. First, I'm thinking about you. All of you at home or where you are now. It's been over a hundred days since the world as we know it shifted. Over a hundred days since we were able to be together in this sanctuary. Over a hundred days since we were able to just do what we wanted to do. Over a hundred days since we lived without the nervous fear of this disease. And I bet you are weary. I know because I am weary too. The strain and exhaustion of living in the breach is a heavy burden. And it's hard when it just drags on without a clear end in focus. So let's say to one another again today, Jesus is a Lord who meets us in the places of strain and exhaustion. Second, Today I'm thinking about all those affected by what's happening with school. Last week in our community, the school district released its plan for how schools will resume in the fall with all the rules and restrictions in place. And it's all really tough. It's tough on the administrators who are having to make plans with no really good options available to them. It's tough on the teachers who are having to reinvent how to be a teacher and are now spending their summer breaks rethinking everything for fall. It's tough on the students and parents who want nothing more than to have some kind of normal school experience but are dealing with the disappointment of realizing that's not possible right now. There are members of this congregation among all these groups, administrators, teachers, parents, and students, who are carrying the heavy burdens of this new reality. And I want all these friends in faith to know that Jesus cares about what you are going through. And God is with you to give you the power and patience you need. Third, Today I'm thinking about the struggle for civil rights in our nation and the striving for justice that still goes on. For generations, the heavy burden of the struggle for peace and equality has pressed down hard on people of color and people at the margins. Though there's been a lot of energy and emotion ignited recently around issues of race and justice, Injustice, if you listen to some, especially those who have been in this fight for a long time, there is a weariness. A weariness that more progress has not been made. A weariness that comes from wondering when peace and justice will be stronger than chaos and hatred. I don't even have to understand exactly how that feels to believe that those struggles are real and that they matter Lord. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me, those who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. And I know that there are sisters and brothers who are suffering from racism and oppression who Jesus is speaking to with that good word. Our world is dealing with weighty matters now. And that's why we need this good news that Jesus is doing some weight lifting for us. I will give you rest. Take my yoke, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and in me you will find rest for your souls. Do you hear this as good news? I hope you do. And then I hope you hear and you understand that with this good news comes an invitation, a responsibility to recognize the heavy loads 
that are being carried by others. That desk, the one that gave me my brush with death as I carried it backward down the stairs all those years ago, that wasn't the only time we had to move that thing. I'm sure we moved it at least three or four more times. And it never got any lighter. We carried it around for years until one day we said, we are not going to carry this around anymore. And we called the donation center who came to our house and took it away. I think that's what Jesus is offering today. Saying to us, you don't have to carry this around anymore. Whatever concerns, frustrations, or sorrows you are carrying now, you don't have to keep carrying them alone. I am here to take them on me. Maybe it doesn't feel that way completely. Maybe some of that strain lingers a while. Maybe it feels like the burden is still heavy for those who have to keep reinventing teaching and learning and life as we know it. Certainly the burden is pressing down on those who struggle for civil rights and an equal measure of justice for themselves and those they love. But this promise, this is the promise of Jesus. And in this promise is the power we need to be set free from our burdens and also to help others be set free from theirs. Let us pray. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. Help us to hear in your living word the living truth that you meet us in our struggles and bear us up in mercy. Help us to look to Jesus, the one lifted up on the cross for our sake, and in him to find the love and the life of your kingdom that transforms us and all the world. Amen.
are apart, let us speak together as one as we profess our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and with the whole creation, let us pray for God's power and blessing to be with us all in need, saying, Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith so that we can grow into the people you want us to be. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us toward more sustainable living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the nations. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Move us toward a more just way of recognizing the worth of all people. Help us to have love for our neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick, or oppressed. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. We pray especially for all on our congregational prayer list and for those we name now silently or aloud. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this family of faith and the many vocations to which you have called us. Bless school administrators, teachers, students, and parents, and all who strive to educate children. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways your love transforms our lives. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hear us now, O God, as we pray in the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Jesus, God takes on our burdens teaches us about the kingdom of heaven, 
and sows the good seed of God's word in us and all the world. May God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you with ears to hear this word, eyes to see the kingdom growing among us, and hearts to live for Jesus. Amen. Thank you for being a part of this time of worship. Though we can't see each other through the screen, it's nice to know that together we are singing songs of faith and offering prayer and praise to God. If you are watching this video on Sunday morning, July 5th, I want to invite you to a special opportunity taking place today. From 11 a.m. to noon in the Zion Church parking lot, there will be safe, and social distanced stations set up where you can share prayer requests and have someone pray for you, give a regular offering to Zion, give food donations to Mission Lexington, and receive a special sending blessing. Check your Zion email for more information or simply come and follow the directions between 11 and noon today. And now, friends, May you go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Now I can have full range of motion with my hands. Each other through the screen. It's nice to know. Nice to know. Do you know Mr. Spoon? I do! Mr. Spoon is my nephew! Your nephew? Well, how about that? I didn't know that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I flipped the script on you, didn't I? <laughs> it's getting hot in here. A race against time. <laughs> it was going so well. Did we get it? I think we got it.